Stellar money on dot and strip first dot and strip first dot and strip first. Welcome to the next exciting episode of Coke and Strippers. Hey, well, we work on electronic projects. If you were with us last time, we revived an old 1980s uh, voice synthesizer, which was pretty cool. And we got a lot of good comments on it, I did. Uh, including some from Steve CRC, my hero, uh, who actually originally designed that voice synthesizer. But anyway, go back and watch that video. But also we got some comments about other things that that voice synthesizer sounded like. We said, some people said they thought it sounded like the voice from, uh, from War Games. Shall we play a game? Oh, <laughs> I think I missed them. And, and some people said they thought it sounded like uh, from, from Kraftwerk. I used to love Kraftwerk. <laughs> But no, those were those were vocoders. So a vocoder takes human speech and modifies it in different ways to sound like a robot. It's not it's not really uh, synthesizing the speech from scratch is taking human speech. So this time we're going to try to build a vocoder. Come on along with me. All right, we're just going to try to see if this project is feasible. I'm going to look at the voltage output from this fancy dancy microphone. Actually, no, I think it came from a karaoke machine and see if it's somewhere within the realm of possibility uh, to read without like a preamp. Um, so let's fire up the uh, oscilloscope and see what kind of voltage out we get. All right, let's turn the scope on. I've got it dialed in, more or less. And for a quick test, we are the robots. We are, we are. So I'm seeing about two, uh, two square units there. My voltage divider is 50 millivolts. We are the robots. I'm getting about 50 millivolt volts peak to peak. Um, so let's see, I've got about uh, 12 bits in the ADC on a teensy. Uh, that's 4096 bits. So if we, but that's across a 3.3 volt range. So if we divide 3.3 by 4096, that's uh, 0008. So we can measure about one millivolt uh, and across a hundred millivolt range, that'll give us about a hundred steps. Um, you know, that seems, that seems plausible. You know, it seems like it's in about the right range. We could probably increase that range by changing the voltage reference on the a, uh, analog to digital converter, but, um, I think we can probably get by with that. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, that's Arduino stuff, but those are mostly Uno. Up here, yeah. I knew I had some from another project. I've got a couple of small boards and at least one teensy. Whoops, I did have one teensy. All right, a teensy 3.1. That's fantastic. That's about 72 megahertz. Um, I think we get around 600K um, sample rate on the ADC. There we go, one teensy. Lots of pins, lots of pins on the top, some extra pins on the bottom. We are good. Now I wish I had a audio jack. I thought I had some around, but I don't. I'll have to order a couple of those on Amazon and get them in the next day or two. So in the meantime, it's going to be more uh, wires wrapped around the plugs kind of wiring, but that'll be fine for the test. Uh, what I want to do next is uh, I'm just going to copy uh, the ADC input to the, to the DAC digital analog converter output and run that through an amplifier and see what it sounds like. See if, um, 
see if I can get some reasonable throughput on this thing. So here we go. All right, well, let's get some pins mounted on this thing. You know, there's not really a good way to mount this board. I'll figure that out later. So an iron turned on. All right, turn the solder iron off. I think we can work with that. So let's get some uh, wiring wired up and a little bit of code written and see what we can come up with. Uh, I'm just gonna use these alligator clips and I'll uh, solder some jumpers up to those. They'll be easy to uh, clip on and off and get on and off the teensy to make sure this thing works. All right, here's our experimental setup. We have uh, this pin connected. This is uh, analog ground. And this is A9. This is analog input nine. And we've got those hooked to these uh, alligator clips. This is the end of our microphone. One of them goes there. One of them goes here. That's our input. Our output is this pin here, which is ground. And the one beside it, which is air DAC, air output DAC. So we hook these up to the little audio amp cheap speaker, computer speakers that I have. All right, here's a little bit of Arduino code. We define our audio sample pin, that's A9, and we have an integer to hold that input. Uh, all we're doing here is creating a serial output so we could see what the output looks like if we run the um, we run the graph tool and we'll say hello. That's just a, a good test to see if your device is booted up. And then this loop, we read the analog input from that sample pin and we store it in this variable. We multiply it by four because those input values are a little low and then we immediately write it to the, to the DAC, send it to the output. Uh, then we'll print that number on the serial port too. All right, so let's give this thing a test. Okay, just a quick test. We've got it powered up. We have the Teensy running. Uh, we have microphone in. We've got amplifier out. This is just a quick test. This is just, can I get from here to there? No modification. Is this thing look like it's going to work? And we have... We are the robots. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. We can go straight from the mic. Uh, through the speakers, actually through a little math, and come to the output. So, so far, so good. All right, I got some jacks in. My rule of thumb is that when you order something, always order more than one. <laughs> always order more than you're going to use, because if you use a part, that's a part that you have picked for some reason. It's a part you like, and you will have a reason to use it again, just because those are the kinds of projects you deal with, uh, those are the parts you know how to use. Even if you don't know what you're going to do with it, go ahead and order a few. It will save you lots of time. When you're trying to build stuff, your um, the time between cycles is key to doing rapid prototyping. If you don't have to wait two days to pick up a part because you can pick it up off your shelf, you save you a tremendous amount of cycle time. Okay, so I'm going to change those jacks from those silly alligator clips that we had, which worked fine for the perfect for the first test. But there was some there was some some noise some buzz and hum and if I do this carefully If I do this carefully Hopefully I can get rid of some of that just because these are shielded tables So let's see if I can strip these in a way that I can still use them and um, Take advantage of their shielded properties uh, We'll start out with a pretty long Strip. So we see that um, on the outside here, they have a ground that's wrapped around the center conductor. Um, and that's the shielding, helps shield it from external electrical noise interference. 
Uh, we want to keep this stripped off as short as possible because this is places noise can get back into the system. But it has to be long enough that you can actually uh, solder it where you need to solder it. That looks like that will probably work. Turn on the soldering iron, let it heat up. Uh, let's get a little bit off of here. All right. Um, not that it really matters. I think the 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 ground is the is the ring, and the signal is the tip, uh, which looks like this. I also want to try to when you're doing soldering, don't forget to try to start out with a good physical connection. Like you know, it would stand a a little force on there, and that'll help make sure you get a good uh, solder connection. When you get done. So this iron should be heated up. We'll tin the tip a little bit. That's not my solder. This is my solder. We'll tin the tip just a little bit and add some heat to that tab and to the wire. All right, so this is what we've got. Let's take a look. Uh, I added a piece of foam core just to keep this thing a little cleaner. I love foam core and hot glue. It's a really fast way to get this stuff done. So uh, what do we have going on here? I've got a quarter inch phono plug uh, and this uh, eighth inch jack as well. And that keeps the noise down a lot, combining that with these cables we made a little earlier. I added these for controls. I've got three pots here. They're just 10 Ks. You're going to put power on one side, ground on the other, and read the signal out of the middle. Uh, you could feed that with a power and a ground and a signal. Uh, when I have plenty of pins and, and, and don't want to run all those, what I'll do is I will hook these up in order. So here's a card showing the pins. This is for a 3.2. That's a 3.1. The pins are the same. But I will plug three pins into, for instance, this A9. Well, I'll start on this end because that's the way I'm really doing it. A0, A1, A2. So these are analog in pins. You can use each of them to read analog, but you can also use them to be digital. So what I do is I set uh, A0 as digital out and A2 as digital out. And I'll run this low, so it'll be zero. This is high, so it'll be one. And then I can read the value in the middle. So for a potentiometer, you run ground on one side, power on the other, and read this value in between. And as you twist from one side to the other, it will become either lower or higher. So I did that three times. And finally, my mic in is on analog nine. Uh, and then my output is on this A14, which is also the, the DAC, the digital to analog converter, uh, which is one of the reasons for going with the Teensy. It's fast and it has a built-in DAC. You program it the same as an Arduino. Well, we'll get into the difference later maybe, but basically you can program it the same as Arduino and use the same Arduino IDE, but you have a lot more power on this card. All right, so let's play with this thing just a little bit. Uh, oh, you know, hot glue. I also put hot glue on these just so they don't fall off. If you, if, you know, if you want, you can peel this off with your fingernail, move the pins around, but it keeps anything from shaking, from shaking loose. So here it is. Let, let's give this thing a, a, a little try, just straight in on a microphone, uh, without any sort of preamp. I'm gonna turn this on. Still get just a little noise. Now, not nearly as much as I got before, but I have just a little. Um, so. Uh, what am I doing here? Well, it's actually a very simple setup. You know, we saw before where I was just reading the analog in and writing it to the analog out and making a basic amplifier. In this case, I have a couple of other controls, but primarily what I'm doing is I'm, general, I'm generating a triangle waveform. Uh, and then so uh, in, in there digitally over time, I'm creating a value that goes up and down. And then I'm modulating that with, with the audio that comes in on the microphone. 
basically by just multiplying those together and then I send that out uh, through the DAC. And that's all that's going on. Now we've got a, a couple of pots here so as I experiment with it <clears throat> to figure out what the best settings are and to give some options uh, when we're going on. I've got three controls. First here is the volume. So you see um, this is we can see the volume go down and see the volume come back up. Uh, down and up. Really bad clipping off the top. But if that's an effect you want, you don't have to drive this, overdrive this for clipping. You can do that mathematically. You can chop the top and the bottoms off your wave. So, so that's pretty cool. So this is just volume. Let's set it somewhere in the middle. All right. Now this, uh, this control right here is to change the amount of, of the uh, audio coming in to the output. So when I've got it all the way this way, none of the audio coming in goes directly to the output. It's all this modulated triangle wave uh, that comes out. But you can mix in a little of the original audio uh, to get different kinds of effects. So let's start. This is with a lot of the original audio. This is with a lot of the original audio. And, and that's a lot of the original audio. Now I'm going to turn it to, to basically none of the original audio. It's all modulated through the triangle wave. This is with a lot So that's without the original audio. It's almost indistinguishable, but you can really hear that triangle wave. And then finally over here, I'm controlling the frequency of this triangle wave. It's actually a modified triangle wave, but I started with just that, and you could do the same. Um, and, and those are so op some options. This is very simple because I'm really just running one frequency band. Um, to, to, to make this more sophisticated, you can run multiple frequency bands. Uh, you might run into some time constraints. I, I've sketched out some code to do it, but I don't think I'll do it at this point. But um, very simple throughput, one frequency band. Um, and I also discovered, I hadn't used a Teensy in a long time. I used it a long time ago for, a, for a, a, a talk that I gave at DEF CON years ago. But in the meantime, with the new ones, uh, uh, Paul, the creator of this, don't forget, uh, pjrc.com, he also created a graphical user interface to to draw out, he has a sound library. So there, there are certain things that you can do just by dragging and dropping sound control. So if you're into some sound and you want to do it with, with an Arduino type of, of device and environment, this is the way to go. Like these chips are 20 bucks maybe, uh, plus or minus a little bit, depending on which one you want. Oh, but anyway, back to this third control. This control is the frequency of, of this triangle wave, whether it happens really quickly or really slowly over time. And let's see if you can hear this. Um, so I'm going to turn it to uh, almost entirely through there. All right. Here, you can hear it at this frequency and at this frequency and at this frequency. So I'm just changing the frequency of the pin. I'm going to do it again with so maybe you hear very little of my voice and you can just hear the frequencies coming out. Here's the last frequency, here's a medium frequency, and here comes a high frequency. So that's what we've got. Um, we can mix in a little of the original text, or a little of the original sound, and play with some of the songs we saw, you know. Uh, we are the robots. We are the robots. Or free stop freaking in the house tonight. Move your body from left to right. To all you free from south to rock. Cause free stop freaking in, you know what? I'm changing the pitch by, by rotating this carrier frequency. And you can imagine how this works when it's more sophisticated. Um, I was changing the pitch by moving this in case you can hear. But right, this 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 leads into you see how this easily leads into the concept of auto tune, where you actually modulate the exact carrier that you want. So that's it. That's the fun uh, with the road coders for today. That's it for the fun today. With, uh, with, with this very simple bow cutter, you can get more complex, again, by running multiple bands or maybe doing uh, some other pieces to it. But for a quick and easy and cheap project, this isn't very bad. Matter of fact, this is pretty cool. Fun way to, to, to spend a weekend. So, 
Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to tell your friends. Uh, and don't forget, spend your money on Coke and strippers. See you next time. Give me the money tonight, move your money from left to right, come on.